Hello everyone, welcome to today's lesson. Um, we're going to be talking about integers and their opposites. So let's just start with some of the key vocabulary we're learning in this lesson. So the first is our absolute value. Um, this is a term you've heard in sixth grade um, at least. Absolute value means the distance a number is away from zero. Um, another important vocabulary is integers. So we already talked about this in our last lesson. Integers are positive and negative numbers and zero with no fractions or dec decimal parts. So that's what we're going to focus on today is integers. Um, then we have opposites or additive inverses. So numbers that are opposites or that are additive inverses are numbers that are the same distance away from zero, meaning they have the same absolute value but they're on the opposite side of the number line, um, which is going to mean they have like the opposite side. So opposites are obviously pretty easy. The definition makes it a little more complicated. So like negative 3 and 3, those are opposites. Negative 10 and 10, those are opposites. Negative a half and a half are opposites. Negative 1.25 and positive 1.25 are opposite. They have the same absolute value. They're the same distance from zero. They're just on opposite sides of the number line. Okay, and then a really key concept from this lesson is that opposites sum to zero. So when we add negative 2 plus 2, which are opposites, you're going to get zero every time. Okay, so for this lesson, we're going to start with going over some of those vocabulary, um, looking at some models to help us understand why this is, really focusing in on a number line, something that's going to be important um, as we're doing these operations the rest of the unit is being able to represent equations and problems on a number line, um, not just be able to get the answer. Okay, so we're gonna focus on that and then we're gonna look at two examples at the end, two practice problems. Okay, so for our first thing, we're gonna be just looking at that term absolute value to review that. So this is saying these are the absolute value bars and it's saying what is the absolute value of negative two, meaning how far is negative two from zero? Okay, so if I find so like I said, we're going to be kind of representing all these numbers using a number line. So we can represent the number negative 2 with an arrow that starts at 0 and goes to negative 2. Okay, this is going to represent negative 2. So it starts at 0, we go to negative 2. Okay, and then it's like, how far is that distance? How far did we travel to go from 0 to negative 2? Start at 0, we go 1, 2. Okay, so the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, right? It took us 1, 2 jumps to get to negative 2, so that's our distance from 0. Now let's look at positive 2. So I'm going to be representing positive numbers with green today and negative numbers with um, red. Okay, so if I look at 2, I have 2 down here. Right, I can represent that on a number line with an arrow starting at 0 and it goes to 2. And again, I want to figure out what's the distance from 0 to 2 to find my absolute value. So I can do the jumps starting at 0, 1, 2. Okay, the distance is 2. So that gets at a general rule that how do you find the absolute value? What we often say is it's just the positive version of the number. Okay, and then let's just do quickly for zero. So the absolute value of zero is zero. It doesn't need to travel anywhere. It starts at zero and ends up at zero, zero. What are the pairs of opposites here? Well, we have negative two and two, those are opposites. Negative one and one, those are opposites. And we'll know that those numbers, those opposites, will sum to zero when we do negative two plus two. Okay, so right, this key fact says these opposites, negative two and two, need to sum to zero. Okay, so we can think about that on the number line is first we're going to start at negative 2. Starting at negative 2 means I have this diagram so far. I'm starting at 0 and then I draw an arrow that ends up at negative 2. So I've so far represented negative 2. Then I need to add 2. So adding 2 means I'm going to start where I ended up. So that means I have to start my arrow at negative 2. And then positive 2 means I move to the right 2. Where does this arrow end up? It ends up right at zero. Um, but we're going to think about it conceptually more, looking at our whole model as well. All right, so this is the whole model for adding and subtracting integers. We're going to use it a lot over this unit. Um, I think it's a helpful conceptual way of understanding why we get the answers we do when we add positive and negative integers and numbers. 
So this, we're going to look at the idea that opposites sum to zero. In this model, we have the ground level of zero, and then we're going to have a hole in the ground. When we take a hole in the ground, um, we're going to end up getting a negative number. Holes will always represent negative numbers, a low ground to do that. And we're removing the dirt. Okay, the dirt is going to be positive numbers. So when we have that dirt, that's going to be a positive two. So I have a pile of dirt in this situation that goes up to, up to two. So we can think of that as like two feet. Okay, so I have a pile of dirt that's two feet. And then here I have a hole in the ground that's like two feet deep. So this is going to be negative 2, that's my hole in the ground. This is going to be positive 2, my pile of dirt. Let's see what happens when you add our negative 2 plus 2, meaning we combined a hole in the ground of negative 2 with our dirt that's 2 feet high. And I'm going to take my dirt, and it fills in the hole. Just like that, I'm filling in the hole. And now what I have is I have ground level right here. That's my ground level, that is zero. And often when we represent these problems, we're gonna use a vertical number line, right? So that's positive two, with, I can represent that with this arrow. Then I have negative two, right? This hole is negative two deep. So that's my arrow of negative two. And like we saw before, when we combine them, we take negative two plus two, we're gonna get right back to zero. Important note, um, addition, is what we call commutative. Commutative means we can switch the order. So instead of having negative two plus two, I could have had two plus negative two. Two plus negative two is also equal to zero. Okay, so that would mean kind of we're starting with two, positive two, we add negative two, and we're gonna get back to zero. Keep that whole idea in mind when you're thinking about why do opposites sum to zero. Now that we understand why opposites sum to zero, um, we learned our key vocabulary. Let's just look at a few two practice problems here. Marcus dives from the surface of an ocean eight, 18 meters below sea level. What integer represents Marcus's location relative to the surface? How far does Marcus have to go to return to the surface? Okay, so let's just start with representing this with a picture. So I'm gonna draw the vertical number line. Marcus dives from the surface of the ocean eight feet, 18 meters below sea level. Okay, so sea level, where the water is, where we start to see the water. So this is sea level. So we're gonna represent our sea level as zero. That's like our kind of our starting point. If we go above sea level, we're going to go into positive numbers. If we go below sea level, we're going to go into negative numbers. So Marcus dives from the surface of the ocean 18 meters below sea level. Okay, so that's going to be somewhere down here. And Marcus has gone down 18 meters. That negative 18 is going to be an integer that represents Marcus's location relative to the surface. He is 18 meters below sea level below zero, so he's at negative 18. That's the answer to my first question. And then it says, how far does Marcus have to go to return to the surface? Marcus is currently a negative 18. How far does Marcus have to change in order to get to the surface? Well, what is the surface? What, it, what integer represented sea level for us? Zero, right. Zero was sea level. Okay, so what we're really being asked here is negative 18 plus what number is gonna give us zero? If we're starting at negative 18, what is that distance we have to go? What do we have to do to travel up back to zero? So we know something very important. A key concept of today is that opposites sum to zero. So that means negative 18 and negative 18's opposite is gonna equal zero. So what is the opposite of negative 18? Perfect, the opposite of negative 18 is positive 18. Okay, so that means that Marcus has to go 18 meters to return to the surface, has to go up 18 meters. So that's the answer to the second part of the question. Okay, awesome. All right, and then for our second question, um, this is a select all that apply. Which of these situations 
can be represented by the opposite of 80. Okay, so first thing we need to do right away is we need to figure out what is the opposite of 80. Well, you can tell me that. What's the opposite of 80? Yep, negative 80. The opposite of negative 80 is 80. The opposite of 80 is negative 80. We're just switching the sign. Okay. All right, so which of these can be represented by the opposite of 80, or we often think of that as negative 80? Let's go one by one. An airplane descends 80 meters. Okay, so a really important thing is to know what this word descend means. Descend means to go down. Okay, you can remember that the D in down, the D in descend. Okay, so when we're going down, is that going to be represented by a negative 80 or a positive 80? A negative 80, right? Whenever we're going down, that's going to be negative. So yes, negative 80 can represent an airplane descending 80 meters. So that's going to be yes. Okay, then we have an elevator ascends 80 meters. Ascends is the opposite of descend. It means to go up. Okay, so if we're going, if we're going up 80 meters, is that going to be represented by a positive 80 or a negative 80? Yeah, it's going to be a positive 80. Okay, so that is not going to be one we check. Okay, then we have the cost of a train drops $80. So dropping, again, means the price is going down. Okay, so if a price is going down $80, is that going to be represented by negative 80 or positive 80? Negative 80, great. Okay, then we are removing 80 songs from an MP3 player. This is a date question. An MP3 player is like an iPod, kind of, just play music on it, but an iPod is like an iPhone with just music. Anyway, old question. So you remove 80 songs from an MP3 player. If we're removing them, we're taking them away, we're going to have less songs after this. Okay, so if we're removing songs, we have less after this. Is this going to be a negative 80 or a positive 80? Yeah, again, it's going to be a negative 80. Removing means we're taking them away, so that's going to go down. The number is going to go down. Okay, and then lastly, we have Susie's grandmother is 80 years old. So she is 80 years old. Is that going to be represented by a positive 80 or a negative 80? Yeah, a positive 80. She is 80 years old, so that's all it is. We're not saying she's, like, dropping an age. Okay, awesome. Great job, everyone.